Hello, this is video 72. I'll be talking about Pascal's principle, just telling you what it is and doing an example. Pascal's principle states that a change in pressure applied to an enclosed fluid is transmitted undiminished to every portion of the fluid. So what does that mean? All it means is best understood if you look at this picture here. This is a picture of some fluid that is enclosed and there's a, a different area. There's a piston here that is free to move and it has a different area than on the other side. So this fluid is enclosed. If you change the pressure on one side, for example, if you increase the pressure on the left by pressing down here, then that increase in pressure is going to be felt throughout the fluid. So that means there's going to be a force pushing up here on the right if you push down on the left because you have that pressure is transmitted through the fluid. We get an equation for this because pressure equals force per area. So what we're saying is that the pressure on the left side, which we're going to say it's F1 over A1, is going to equal the pressure on the right hand side, F2 over A2. One thing that we notice an application of Pascal's principle is what I wrote in the notes below here. To make the force larger, the pressure is applied to a larger area. What I mean here is that let's say that you're trying to get out a larger force than you put in. And this is what hydraulics, hydraulics do and hydraulic systems in the example in the next slide but you input a small force and you get a big force out. Well, in order to get a big force out, you must have a bigger area than you had originally. If you look at the equation, that makes sense. If you want F2 to be big, well, then what do you have to do to A2 so that this ratio on the right-hand side still equals the one on the left-hand side? We have to make the area big, bigger as well. And let me just spend one extra minute on this. If this doesn't make sense to you, put some numbers in. So let's say that, just put some random numbers. Let's say F1 is 2, and let's say that A1 is 4. And now let's say that we want F2 to be bigger. Let's say we want F2 to be 6. We want F2 to be three times as big as the original force. Well, what does A2 have to be so that this ratio is equal to 2 over 4, which is 1 half? It has to be 12 for 1 half to be equal to 1 half. So you can see that the area had to get bigger when the force got bigger. So you can always plug numbers in if, if you don't really understand what I'm doing with arrows making things bigger or smaller. Let's do one example of using Pascal's principle. And in this class, we're only going to see Pascal's principle used in hydraulic systems. In this example, we have a hydraulic system is used to raise a car weighing 9,000 newtons. The columns have, a cross, have cross sections of 10 centimeters squared and 300 centimeters squared. How much force must be applied to the first column? We just said, that to get a larger force out, we must have a bigger area. You see that we, we're trying to have a large force to lift up the car. We have a large area here. But we don't want to have to input a large force on the left-hand side, so we have a small area here to correspond to a small force. To solve this problem, whenever you have hydraulic systems, just use Pascal's principle, F1 over A1, equals F2 over A2. And it's just plug and chug. What about the units for the area here? We have A1 is equal to 10 centimeters squared, and we have A2 is equal to 300 centimeters squared. Do we need to convert the centimeters squared to the standard unit of meters squared? It turns out that we don't. This is one of the few exceptions where we don't have to convert to the standard units. And this is because 
the units is at the same location on both sides that they end up canceling out. So as long as they're the same, you're good to go. You can see this when I rearrange my equation. We're looking for F1, the force applied to the first column. If we solve for F1 by multiplying A1 to both sides, we get F2 over A2 times A1. If we plug in our numbers just so that we can see how the units work out here, where F2 is the force on the right hand side, which is the 9,000 newtons to raise up that car. If we plug in the numbers with units this time just to see what happens, A1 is 10 centimeters squared and A2 here is 300 centimeters squared. You can see what I meant that the units cancel out. So no point wasting time converting them ahead of time. You can see that you're left with newtons, the same unit that you had originally. When you go ahead and plug this into your calculator, 9,000 times 10 divided by 300, you're going to get F1 is equal to 300 newtons. So this makes sense. Conceptually, you know that I like to think conceptually on things. You put a force of 300 newtons, you're trying to get that force 30 times bigger, 9,000 newtons is 30 times bigger than 300 newtons. Well, how much bigger do you have to make the area? You have to make the area 30 times bigger than the original area. So that's all for this video. We talked about Pascal's principle, F1 over A1 equals F2 over A2. Hopefully these problems are easy to recognize for you. You'll usually see a picture like this or it's just going to say that hydraulic system. And just make sure to plug in the numbers that correspond to the right force in the right location. Right, The bigger area has to correspond to the bigger force and vice versa.